Hi, I'm Mary Spender and you are watching Anderton's TV and I've been really wanting to try this American Elite Series Strat. Did the elite strat live up to expectations? Yeah. 
<laughs> Simply. It's kind of a strap with all the bells and whistles, isn't it? So uh, I guess if we're just sort of noodling around in a situation like this, we probably didn't experiment with as much as we could. But it's, mm. you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the relatively top of the range, locking machine heads, uh, noiseless pickups, the S1 switching. Um, I think it's got this new um, neck carve, which is, which is not only have you got compound radius on the fretboard, so it's curved here and flatter here, but the back of the neck does something so that the, you know, the carve in your hand actually changes as you get further up to go. I think it's like more C-shaped and more sort of U-shaped up here. So it's one of those kind of carves where they've tried to just sort of go, hmm, you know, we've got these incredible CNC machines now that can you know, cut things out to within a billionth of an inch of everything. So why not, you know, don't have to, to stay with traditional neck carve. So what's the difference with this strap? So uh, new noiseless pickups. So I guess the, the kind of the holy grail for Fender is to make a pickup that sounds like a guitar from the 50s or the 60s, but eliminate that kind of um, background hum that you get with uh, single coil pickups when you have a lot of gain. So probably the uh, best way to demo that is to grab a guitar that doesn't have noiseless pickups without changing any of your settings. Give me okay. the cable. Uh, so typically you can hear that hum in the background now. We're not massively loud in here, so it's not really annoying, but if you were recording, it potentially might be. Yeah. And if you plug your guitar in. Nothing. You can see there's no hum. So that's amazing. That's the single coil thing and it's and it sounds pretty authentic as a vintage strat uh, you've got the, the new neck carve as i mentioned on the the telly um i don't think there's a massive amount of extra new colors and stuff that they've done on the, on the elite strat but it's always yeah. been you know you've got the sort of within the american range they have the standard or what's now been replaced with the professional series which is your kind of um modern take on a strat but still with fairly traditional parts um, in terms of machine heads and pickups and stuff and then the elite just kind of plus ones it by giving you the the different neck calves the the locking machine heads the noiseless pickups that sort of stuff but not you know it's not a huge departure you you've chosen one of the less traditional colors i um, have this blue sparkle yeah which is cool so that's another thing where again perhaps the elite might appeal to somebody that's looking for something less traditional more contemporary yeah. um but I don't know, how do you, you know, when you, you've play, have you played Strats before, much before? Yeah, I used to have um, a Mexican and the neck on this is a hundred times better than what I had. Um, and the neck was too chunky for me, so right. that's why I had to switch. But this one, as soon as I picked it up, I knew it was going to be easy to play. Yeah. And something a bit bluesy, so that's why I chose that song. There's definitely, I think what comes on the, the higher the, the more the higher up the fender strap range they definitely out the box have that slightly more played in mm -hmm. feel to them so you, i mean i've had loads of straps from affordable squire ones through to american ones and i think you can get some amazing amazing cheap straps nowadays but you kind of yeah, need yeah. to you do need to sort of play them in a little bit and the one thing i notice when you buy typically american fender straps is you do get that feeling straight out the box of like oh yeah this you know, this feels like I've owned it for a while, yeah. even though you haven't. Well, I also owned that Fender when I didn't really know what I liked either. So yeah. that neck for someone else would have been perfect. But for me, yeah. it just wasn't the right fit. Whereas this one just feels really comfy in my hand as well. So D did you do that thing that I did with Fenders, which was because it was the first guitar I ever started on. Mm -hmm. um, I had like a Squire. Actually, do you know what? I think I was lucky. I don't think it was a Squire. I think it was one of the... Um, Spoil. affordable fenders not american <laughs> fender but one of the far eastern fenders um and i had that and i after six months or 12 months of playing just because i wanted something else you know i sold it and i bought something else and i really went on this journey of trying not to go back to the strat just because i'd had one mm -hmm. um and it took me about five or six years before i bought my second strat and just kicked myself for, for trying to be alternative for trying to not else. yeah and just going look, there's a reason why the strap is, is such a popular guitar yeah. and been so copied and absolutely uh, well look there we go any comments that you've got I mean I suppose I could tell you I was using the Elite Telecaster um, if anything there's probably more 
new and innovative stuff on the Elite Tele uh, than there is on the strap. We've got the, the F-hole, this really weird, well I say weird, I've never seen it before, before this guitar anyway, this, this bridge system that kind of, I, I'm, I haven't actually taken the strings off of one of these guitars, but I'm told if you take the strings off here, literally the bridge just comes out. It's, it's like a, it's, it's just like basically slotted into this, yeah. this gap here. Same noise, well, Telecaster versions of your noiseless pickups, mm -hmm. S1 switching. We've done Elite video uh, reviews, so if you just wanna go and pick out on a 20 minute review of these guitars, search Elite Strats on the Anderton's channel and you'll find them. But there we are. I enjoyed that song too. Great. I got a Stevie Ray thing going. I know I'm not playing a Stevie Ray Vaughan guitar, <laughs> but I got this sort of, I've got this cool clean channel, clean sound. So I, I was playing the, in fact, we should say what, what we were using so i was playing the rhythm because i wasn't terribly familiar with that song i have this jamming style that goes if i play sort of really quietly and daintily no one will notice any of the wrong notes so i kind of <laughs> i had this like toned rolled off lots of reverb courtesy of the new tc hall of fame 2 i think i used the neck pickup for the whole thing um and i was playing with that kind of I was just trying to be that quiet and let you sort of take the main rhythm thing so that I didn't play any bad notes apart from one where instead of playing that, I, I played that. Uh, but then I've just got this Layla Sunday Driver boost and I turn the tone control back up of this. Oh man. Sounds great. And I just went, oh, that sounds wicked. So that yeah. was my kind of, that was my kind of tone out of there. You had a D&M drive, I think, didn't you? I did. Um, it's the first time I've taken it for a spin. Just um, using, who was your, oh, poor old Dan. Sorry, <laughs> poor old Mick. I'm afraid Mary prefers the Dan side. For, um, for this song, I was oh, choosing I the see. drive. Yeah, so the boost would have been useful if I was uh, with a full band and I just wanted to like boost it Give, us, a, give us an on and off, what, so with no, with no I actually think I pedal sound. So, um, let me hear the, so, so, sorry, you did the whole of that with the pedal on. Yes. Right, so, so let's just hear the guitar with no pedal on. Oh. So we can get an idea of the bass tone. Super clean. Yeah. Very traditional Strat sounding. But you liked a bit of Dan, uh, <laughs> which gave you quite a lot of extra level, didn't it? So let's. Absolutely. But not like crazy distortion, is it? It's just, it's no, just a nice... just a little bite. Fat bite, yeah, mm. that's exactly it. So there you go. Tune in next week where uh, Mick will be demonstrated. Mary will plug into Mick um, <laughs> and uh, we shall see what happens there. But anyway, thank you so much for inviting me in for another impromptu jam. No worries, thanks for watching. Yes, she's been Mary Spender. He's been Lee Anderton. We'll see you next time. So smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.